st I studied graphic design at Oregon State and then at Stanford, got a master's degree at, in, at Stanford and did my first film at Stanford. And uh, God bless the professor who suggested I try a film. Uh, and uh, um, my first job out of school was working on Sesame Street spots at Cordy Films in Mill Valley, California, in the Bay Area. And uh, so we made a uh, uh, animated feature there out of cut out paper. And uh, uh, it's uh, not very many people know about it called Twice Upon a Time. And uh, uh, so I really loved working in the animation world. Uh, but it, at that point, it, there weren't a lot of opportunities. It, even Disney was hardly releasing any features at that point. And it was really a very different scene than it is right now. So. Uh, after that, I worked there for six years. I, uh, uh, I worked in live action at uh, Lucasfilm, uh, working on their Ewok television films and uh, other live action projects there. And I got a job following that up at Industrial Light and Magic and worked as a visual effects uh, art director there for seven years. Uh, and that eventually led into production design again at, on James and the Giant Peach. And after that, I started at Pixar on Monsters Incorporated, Ratatouille, and now I'm working on Cars 2. Well, for computer animation, I think people have the idea, and it's a misconception, that the computer does it all and uh, that we're just sort of pushing buttons. And, you know, it's hard for the the audience to really know uh, how it's all done, but the fact that we have to design everything that you see on the screen uh, and that nothing comes for f for free is some is a challenge we're always uh, up against, and that it's why the films take four or five years t to actually make. And uh, um, the the upside of that is that we can control exactly what the image looks like on the screen, that there, there are no sort of accidents. Everything is on purpose. And uh, um, that kind of control with the, uh, the abilities of, of the, the technology right now, and uh, the, the tools are getting better and better so that the artists uh, can use the tools and the tech folk are becoming more artistically educated. And the whole thing, I think, is is coming together in a sort of high point right now, I think. It's, it's a kind of a golden age for uh, animation right now, I, I think. Well, the uh, tools are changing very quickly, uh, and uh, things that weren't, weren't possible on the last film are actually, I shouldn't say easily doable, but are uh, the scope of the films, I think, uh, are, is going to continue to grow so that the the big problems in the past of doing cloth or doing humans or doing effects like flames and water those are all getting under control so that uh, uh, it really there's nothing uh, stopping us right now uh, it, you know the the early films uh, Toy Story and A Bug's Life and even the, the first cars were de designed around the idea that well, these sort of hard shell characters are easier for the computer to do than human characters, which have a tradition of looking kind of disturbing, at least up until recently. And uh, so now, you know, I, th I think some of those boundaries are being broken. And, uh, you know, it's really exciting for me. Uh, the, the, it's al almost any kind of story, I think, can be told right now in animation.